Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video M2A520 I will be showing you how to create a realistic milk shader. Uh, and for this tutorial I a little bit more than usual. I actually did a real flow simulation to, uh, to get nice uh, liquidy shapes. So in the left image here you can actually see the simulation on my early test renders. And I'm not really happy with the milk so far. It looks more like lean 1% uh, fat milk or something. Um, but I want to uh, go for the um, image, the reference image on the bottom right, which is more like a fatty milk. And you can see at the top it's very see-through actually, but uh, I want to give a nice impression on that. So um, what is new? I will be actually providing you with the full RealFlow simulation as an Alembic file. Uh, which so you can actually follow along or do your own test renders maybe do water or honey or whatever so i'll be providing that and you will actually get access to the full scene files if you become a patron and if you become a patron and subscribe for the source file stuff uh, you can actually uh, get the source files for all my previous tutorials um, starting i think from m2a502 or, f or five or yeah, I think five or two or five or four, um, and from that point on, you get all the source files if you subscribe to that Patreon thingy. So on my Patreon page at the bottom, you can get source files. If you sign up for this source materials, um, you get access to the whole whole thing. So it would be great to get your support on that. But anyways, um, so I will be giving you this actually. So this is the, the liquid sim and you can see at the bottom is the render um, of the Alembic file and it's very high res. So if, you are, if I enable the wireframe, you can see it's very dense and it's of very good quality. So I will be providing that. And yeah, so I can kind of play back the sim so it starts there and then it connects to the oreo which is in the center it's a bit different than the reference image or my test image so there will be one big uh, cookie in the center here and then the liquid flows around it so this is currently my setup and yeah so i guess this is all i need to do before we jump in and yeah so Oh, by the way, I have an uh, Instagram page as well. I need to plug all my stuff now. Now is the time. Um, oops, that was Photoshop. So on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram.com and search for my full name. And you get actually all the um, access or early previews of my renders. So I'll be most of the time posting my stuff on there for you to get access as well or early access to the stuff I'm working on. Okay, so we hit the three minute mark, so let's jump right into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing what I wanna do is uh, save that scene. And I always like to organize my scene, so I always create my groups. I, I wanna do it from scratch today because people keep asking me how I do this, and that's just easier if I just do it quickly from scratch. Obviously, if you know this stuff already, you can just skip it but this is the setup so liquid is my liquid it goes into geo i like to give it colors in my outliner so i am enabling colors here choosing the, that color i mostly do it all the time so i'm pretty fast in doing so uh, yeah so then we need to create a camera so for now let's just st stop the render at the bottom and create camera from view uh, let's call this main and put this into my camera and I like to have a large focal length um, so I get nicer depth of field so I like to play with 80 millimeters and then my render resolution depending on the format but here's my render settings I like to do something more vertical so let's try maybe uh, let's try maybe 2000, uh, 1200 by maybe 2k I'm not sure how the format is uh, let's just uh, let's just enable the wire resolution gate. So I'm just setting up the camera now, and we'll see what we get. So if I check my overscan, I guess it's not. Oh, it's actually it's pretty good. So let's just zoom in here, like so. I don't I I don't know the real framing yet, but I I I would like to go for something kind of like this. 
we'll see what we get. So I'm just for now having it like this, um, reducing the overscan a bit like that. It's just for me to see what we get there. Okay, if I update this, we should be correct there. If I render through the shot cam, there we go. Alrighty, so because of um, the format, it's very vertical. I like to tear off the render viewer and put it on the side uh, like so. So now I've got them side by side and I have a lot more uh, room to play. I like to have it actually on, right in the center of my monitor. So the viewer is there. No, I can't resize that. Okay, so I just had to try it a bit more, like move stuff around. Anyway, so I got it working. So this is now my viewport on the left, render in the middle, and my outline on the right. And this is my current setup, right? So, and then I have the hypershade floating right here. So let's call this one liquid for now. Um, but before we start, I not need to uh, create the light because currently we render in basic. So uh, to get the correct light, I need to uh, create a sky dome. I'm also providing the HDR for this. So I'm choosing my favorites file and then I'm browsing through that. So let's just do this. Uh, I'm just choosing the HDR now. I will be placing this actually in, this, in the scene files for this. Um, let me just do this now. Okay, so I just copied it in, into the source images. So now you have the HDR right here. It's loading it up, opening, and now we have the HDR in place. So let's just call this uh, ENV or LGG ENV, whatever you prefer, and drag it into the LGT group. Okay, so now that's there, and we can do update render and go to shaded and this is now our shaded mode i need to assign a shader first so right click assign shader i use the ai standard surface shader and this is what we get on the default so let's just rename this ai milk liquid i guess that's the shader and that's assigned so obviously we can now uh, rotate the light a bit just to to get something more pleasing uh, let's see, so if I would rotate it, I like to get nice edges, so that's something I try to do, rotating it, and I like to try to get the blue sky back. So this is very front lit, so that's not as pleasing, I guess. Something back lit is interesting. Um, because it's it will be a scattering shade or we need to get something very interesting here. Um, but before we do this, um, before we actually do the lighting stuff, I first want to load in the Oreo, so the kill key, so we have that in place. So I'm be just importing that as well. Okay, so I just uh, imported that one as well, like a import um, GPU cache. Okay, so that's here. Let's just drop this into geometry as well. And this is where it is currently. Obviously, this is the lowest version which I used for the simulation. But for now, this is totally fine. I just need to um, place the camera now. So uh, uh, let's just head over here. And now what I need to do is kind of position the camera. So what I can do, I can um, do it in the 3D viewer like this basic. Um, first, let's choose a frame actually. So something which is uh, very pleasing, I guess. So we're, with lots of nice um, movement in it, but I think something around end of frame will be very interesting. I think this is nice because you get these nice thinner parts, the liquids collide. So now we just need to get the nice framing done. So let's just move to the main camera. So I guess we just rotate and see what we get. I think I like kind of this placement because we get this nice thing here. Get the cookie there, li liquid pretty close up. I'm not so happy with these shapes here because of the sim. So we can try to hide them by doing this. Yeah, let's do that actually. And can, we can zoom in a bit more, tilt it a bit more. 
Okay, so now we have the milk in the foreground. We got some milk on the background and then obviously um, the cookie on the top, which is, I, th I pretty much like the framing. Um, still some minor adjustments, oh, but I think we can live with that. So I'm locking this now with the camera lock there. Uh, now let's move back to the shaded view. And now we can actually just rotate the light until we get some nice edges. And I think I will also be placing some lights later on for some nice um, highlights, like a r nice rim or something. So let's see what we get. Ideally, we get a blue sky in the background. So this would be lit from the right. Now let's just go for the left lighting. So when uh, the one we had before, which I kind of like, this one is pretty cool. Can move it a bit more over the side. So now we can actually change the mode to lighting and we can see a raw lighting. So we can see that the key is kind of coming from the left hitting uh, the cookie here and we get some nice rim moving it over a bit more and then I will add a nice um, kicker light from the right or something so I think this is pretty cool um, and which for now we just live with that so um, the first part of this tutorial is I guess shading the cookie and then we go to the final part which is the milk so for now we have the lowest version of it so I will be just importing the high-res model for the Oreo and then we'll be, we'll be doing some look dev on that quickly. So let me just import that for a second. Alrighty, so now the high-res uh, cookies in here, which is awesome. So all we gotta do now is start shading this bad boy. So selecting the top and bottom, assigning a new material, uh, AI standard sur surface, and let's do, call this uh, Oreo. And this would be, I guess, the inside will be Oreo, um, uh, what is it, cream? Let's just rename that properly, AI Oreo cream, like this. And they should be assigned. So for now, I'll just be hiding the liquid. And I guess uh, we can stay in this mode and maybe, yeah, let's just do this for now saving and now we will be starting that so i'll be loading in a few reference images and so you can see it's a pretty rough texture it's pretty dark it's like a dark brownish texture it's not that shiny this angle because there's i guess they placed a pretty big light behind it so that's why it's so shiny but this is kind of what i'm going for a nice crumbled uh, cookie look so on the inside it's a bit darker but we don't have the broken up things so i think we should be fine with uh, what we got right here so um, I'll be just uh, minimizing this a bit. And if I can get it to zoom, let's just for now keep this as a reference for color. Just move it at the bottom corner. And so now, um, for now we'll be just playing around in the attribute editor. So if I'm not sure, I don't think it's really assigned. So I'll be opening up the hypershade. And Creating a new tab, Oreo. Let's see if we have actually something assigned. I don't think so. So now we need to see if I select the top and bottom. And let's try again with right click, existing Oreo. Okay, so now it's working. And the centerpiece will get the cream as well. There we go. So now if I select both of these guys, I got both in here. So that's perfect. Uh, righty, so for the Oreo itself, um, as I said, it will be, oh, that's why I need to be in shading mode. That's why it didn't show up, I guess. Yeah, now it's working. Alrighty, so now you can see it already by just putting in a, a, a black color, this works pretty good already. Um, but anyways, we want to go for the real thing. So um, before we jump into it, render, uh, render version is 3.01 for M2A, core 5.11, and my current render settings are 2111, uh, rate of 22. So that's all I got, pretty basic stuff. All right, so wait for my base to fuse on one. Let's just pick um, this brown color, something like this. Uh, for now, disable specs, and normally, 
um, the diffuse albedo is a lot darker because there is no spec contribution. So this alone, in my opinion, would be too bright already. So if I move to um, pr uh, perspective camera, this alone is way too bright for a typical um, non-specular material. So what I will be doing now is um, I'm just, first of all, desaturating it a bit more like this maybe and then going a lot darker. So I guess this is something more pleasing. And you can see there is a little bit of color variation. So we want to do this as well. So I, I, I will still keep saving just as a precaution because it's Maya Arnold. It's, it's not always perfect. So keep saving. Um, okay, so opening up the um, create a node dialog. And I just want to create a basic AI noise pattern for my Oreo. So my color one is the one I just chose, uh, which is this, whatever it, this is, you can't see it now because it's too small. And color two would be the same color, just a bit lighter like this. So now what, what, what I want to do is change the mode to be um, either uh, object or PRF. Essentially it's the same, but world is uh, whatever. I just choose object and I will be changing my scale to be a lot smaller. Let's try maybe 50, 50 reps on each. So now you can see there is something happening. And if I would increase this and isolate that, you can see this is my pattern. This is a bit too small. So let's just go down maybe to 30 and octaves up. So more detail. Let's just actually go with maybe 15 in scale. Yeah, I think this works actually a lot better. So if I change back my color to be a lot darker again, you, you can see there is this nice variation. And for this, let's bring in some more saturation, maybe a bit darker, but more sad. So now this is what we got. And yeah, it's not too apparent. So we can try to go a bit brighter. Maybe just like this. And currently there's no bump or anything on it. It's just sculpted. So we keep it for now as this and there's no spec on it. So we might actually go a bit darker as well. Uh, but going back to the shader, let's introduce the spec again. Spec weight on one, you can see it gets a lot brighter. And obviously the roughness is totally off. So we need something pretty high. Let's try six, five, this kind of works. Um, this is broken up a lot more in terms of bump. So this is why it's too shiny now. Um, but I will be opening up the hypershade and connecting a uh, not the same noise, but a very similar noise pattern as I just had for my normal map. So I'm just duplicating the one actually and creating an AI bump uh, connecting my out color. And then we choose the red because we need float to the map and the out value goes to normal camera. And let's see if I need to do black and white maps like so. And the default weight is very low. So let's just introduce, increase this a bit. And you can see now the spec gets broken up a lot more and you can actually see it's, it's resembling the reflectance a lot better. I'm not so happy with the scale. We need to go smaller. So let's try 30 instead. Just reduce that and you can see now what happened. It got a lot more broken up, but now the the height, I guess is too strong. So it's changing that again. And we're definitely getting somewhere now. I'm pretty happy with this already. It's It, it seems to be in that environment a bit too dark. So let's just check the other one. So this is a lot darker and this is also more uh, smoother. I like this texture, so let's just bring in a bit more um, warmth or brownish color to my base. And by doing that, I'll just be increasing the values a bit more. This might be a tad too much. And more saturation, so it's a bit more brownish. We can go a bit more red, actually. Let's try this one as well. More saturation. There we go. I think this is uh, pretty pretty good and this is not focused on that so i think we we are ha like this should be more than enough like we should be good i guess okay now let's just do the quick uh cream which is kind of a white uh texture it's a bit 
um, scattery. So let's just see what we can do with that. So currently it's just white and I can actually see I need to add some subdivs to my geometry. Anyway, so the cream is white. We give it a bit of a gray shader. Um, we make it pretty rough as well, 0.6 maybe, like that. And uh, IOR, let's, we can do water, oops. So it's not as shiny. And actually what we have for the cookie is also too high, so we can just go a bit lower, so it's not as shiny everywhere. Uh, okay, so scattering, and let's enable this for the cookie change the mode to random walk and obviously it's the scale is off so let's go a really low number here uh, 0.1 that's better still too shiny for sure okay so surface color is kind of white maybe we can go a little bit of yellow and uh, the radius needs to go a lot lower I know this is this might be already good enough let's go a bit lower so it's not so shiny uh, okay i think that this works we can obviously add some some really soft bump as well ai noise just do that pretty quick um do a ai bump node hook these guys up the same as before i'm trying to hurry because time is running out so normal map goes here let's just check the isolate mode so that's a l way too large again so let's try maybe 50. that's pretty good and go to pref and this is the bump pattern so we can zoom in a bit just to see what we get and change the mode uh, maybe more shadow side Okay, so that's connected. It's hard to see anything at all, actually. Let's just try to make it a lot more shiny. Maybe we can see something. Uh, dark color. Okay, so now we can, I'm not actually sure if we see anything. Update. I'm pretty sure the, the value is just too too high. Oh, the roughness is very low as well. Okay, let's just reduce the bump, maybe to zero one one again. Okay, there we go. This is what I was going after. So this nice little breakup just to get, catch a few glints. Obviously, I changed the um, IOR 1.4 again. So now this is kind of like a little snow shader, kind of. Okay, but now we get this nice effect of something on the surface. Obviously, it's um, pretty noisy, so we can actually go maybe to four. Uh, we should clean this up. Okay, so now you can see, I'm not sure if it's that visible, but there is definitely a little pattern going on, um, which is uh, pretty nice. I like it. So I think this should cover the look dev on the cookie. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty decent. Like it's, it's, it's not exactly the reference. There's no light at the bottom, but I think, uh, well, let's just, let's just play a little bit more on the roughness side of things on this guy. So I think the roughness is a bit too high, 0.5 maybe. Yeah, this might just work. Maybe go a bit lower even on the IOR. Break this apart, check perspective camera. Let's see what we get now. Okay, I think that works. So now what I wanted to do, um, just to add smooth normals because currently they are pretty hard and you get these hard edges. So all I want to do is um, go to Arnold tab, subdivision and just put it to Cat Clark. Um, the same for the bottom and the same for the cream. So it's actually subdividing it one more step, which which Arnold handles pretty well. Uh, okay, so next step is starting the milk stuff. So it's now 24 minutes in and now we will we'll be starting on the milk. And obviously we will be adding a few more lights, I guess, to make it more pleasing to the eye. But for now, this is what we got. So I'm, be, I'm just removing the reference or hiding it, minimize this. 
and let's bring in the liquid shift H so now we have that in place so because we have a lock camera this is pretty nice to work with and before we start um, this is actually sim also we have the whole um, sequence and we also have motion blur so all you got to do to enable motion blur is go to render settings and enable this and we should get a nice blurry liquid and you can see the the, the, the um, the little spheres got now more longer and it looks more pleasing definitely you can see there is some motion going on in this um, but for test renders i definitely will disable this and i will also hide the cookie just for now um, just to concentrate on the look liquid itself so bringing back the reference images um, let's just make this a bit wider and i want to definitely go for this milk look you can see though the edges get pretty scattery so you can it's very transparent where it's getting really thin but as soon as it's a thick liquid it's very solid so we need to play with the radius quite a bit and this one it's getting there you can see where it's getting thin it's almost see-through but this is I think just a little bit too much it's nice and yellow where it's scary but I think also that is the saturation is too strong on my first render tests so uh, we can just see if we get this, if we can nail this shader today. Uh, all in all, I just want to show you the principles of shading, how I approach things. So all in all, it should help you, I guess. Anyway, so um, milk, like it's mostly scatter or diffuse. Like if you have wood, you should use diffuse, like just that. Uh, but if you have something organic, it's mostly fully scattery. Um, so what I will tend to do, I just disable the base to zero. So it's black. And for now, I just also disable the spec. So all we need to work with for now is the subsurface tab. And funny enough, if you enable this and do all your, like change the type to random walk, you get this, right? Um, but if you wanna have a diffuse surface, just disable the radius and you kind of get the same as the base. It might be a bit more expensive because it, in, internally it still treats it as a scattering a subsurface shader but you can see that this is now a kind of very solid diffuse object and the bigger we play up the radius the more the object gets transparent so the first thing what I would typically do I click on the preset tab and there is actually milk so we'll go for whole milk so this is the preset for that and all in all this is um, for my scene scale I think not working at all it's very transparent and it's, it just feels too too scattery I guess so you can just change the scene scale by maybe um, the factor of 10 so let's try 0.1 and we're definitely getting somewhere and remember this is only scattering there's no spec on this for now uh, we, let's just try a bit uh, even a bit lower values so it's not as scattery so this is now my result so we have a surface color of a little bit yellowish base color and then we have a radius which is the transparency color of a value of 10 right which means on a scene scale of one this will penetrate 10 units and in my current setup 10 units would be 10 centimeters and that's a lot for milk so even if I divide that by uh, 10, which is a, by a scale factor of 0.1, the radius is still 10 units and 10 units is one centimeter. Um, this might be all right, but it just looks that it's still too much, right? And so for that reason, I'll be just changing either the radius, like either the value of 10.9 to half maybe. So it's, tra uh, it's tracing only 0.5 centimeters let's just try this so changing the value to 5 which is 5 centimeters and then the scale is dividing that value by 0.1 which is then 0.5 units which is in my case centimeters so this might actually be already very interesting keep in mind there's no spec so this might still look odd but anyway so if I just render the bottom portion for now and let's enable the spec so change the IOR to water it's very 
similar to water so that should be the same you want if you want you can go a bit higher because it's a bit more fatty than water so maybe 1.4 roughness is all right like this we can go 0 0.5 maybe and let's bring in the weight to one so now we get we should get all the specky milk back and you can see it's it's not that that um, reflective like this one and what I did to get this one uh, my reference image working is I placed actually some more lights because this is just catching the sunlight and you get these little pinks everywhere right which is what you want this is how it would be um, but you want to make it more pleasing and you can see that even here there is some studio lighting involved to get this nice sheen effect and again I feel this currently is still too transparent there is no solid to this so um, we can try to um, change the anisotropy and f and see what we d what we get with that this is just pushing the the scattering into a more um, front direction or the back scatter direction so we can try negative values to have a more solid feeling to this and this already helped quite a bit i guess yeah, it's not that solid and if you go higher it gets more transparent towards the edges and this is even more see-through now than before you can see it's really drastic effect so for now i just want to change the surface color to be not as yellow so maybe go 0 0.5 and also the white is for in my opinion too white so let's just bring that down so it's a bit more like a grayish color something like this and then the radius is a bit too yellow as well. So let's put the saturation down to maybe 0.5. Now you can see it already got a lot wider like this. So it's a lot of trial and error for sure. Um, so let's bring down the radius a bit more. So now we get the solid feeling back, which is very interesting. And to exaggerate the effect, you can actually, for testing it, um, change the saturation to be very high and maybe even change a different color so you can see how deep it's actually scattering and you can see it's pretty deep like all the blue is the scattering light so by by changing the the radius value which is currently on two we can go lower and you should see this the blue gets smaller and smaller like this region here which is the transparent region which which is exactly what we want so the lower i go here it almost disappears now so it's only this little bit here which is scattering and this is actually pretty close to what what milk should be it's it's not that scattery actually so you can see there you, you can s see the scattering happening there and most of the rest is pretty solid so let's just go with that and change the color now back to this yellow so we had i think it was on 29 or something as the preset was a little bit of yellow like that and obviously it's way too saturated so we go play it down and i think this is now getting really close to the image it might be a bit yellow still but that's easy to fix just uh, reduce the saturation a bit more maybe go a bit more in the yellow re regions and desaturate some more 0.3 and this is very close i guess so uh, what I did now, or what I would be doing now is I just want to add some surface breakup to the whole thing and to visualize this a bit better I just disable this quickly so we get a fully uh, shiny one shiny milk and then I'll head over to the hypershade and assign weirdly enough a noise bump onto the milk um, so there we go and I just do AI noise again I can type like this and this would plug into the normal camera so AI bump to denode and the red output goes to map out value goes to normal and let's see what we get if I visualize this first so this is the scale of it and if I go to PREF and let's just try maybe five and scale might be already too small so let's do two this kind of works I want it to be very soft, um, but I want it to be like stretched in one axis. So it's more like a liquidy feel, I guess. 
and we can try to add distortion to this whole thing so it's more like some weird pattern i think this works let's just maybe do it uniformly maybe one and add two details yeah we need to see how it works this might just work let's see Alrighty, so if I boost up the bump, you can see now we're breaking up this surface here and it like, looks a lot more bumpy than it was originally, like this, right? It's very smooth. And if I bring introduce this a bit, you can see that we are breaking up the surface to make it just more interesting. Obviously, this one is very smooth on my reference, but then again, when it's in here, it gets really bumpy as well. And this is like really bumpy as well, like at here and then at the top there. And it might be that my sim is not perfect. It's maybe too too um, watery still. But anyways, this should just do it, I think. So let's go with that. Checking that again. So if it's on and off. Smooth and I think it was a nine. Yeah, I think this should just work just to play up more of the shape i guess we can also increase the roughness a bit so if i'm i'm checking all this area here if i increase some more roughness we get a little bit more interesting shapes um we can roughen this up a bit and then fake the shader or break it if you introduce some more coding and doing that will um, give us the these high pings but we still have a softer um, milky sheen to it Obviously, this is not physically accurate anymore. So that's an um, artistic thing to do. So let's just keep it maybe. Let's just keep it off for now and reduce the roughness a bit. Like uh, 0 0.75. Alrighty. So this is that. And now let's introduce what I was talking about, another light source to get some, um, to get some more reflections. And that's pretty easy. It's just an area light. So you can get fancy and plug in a texture map to make it more realistic and all that stuff. Um, but tutorials for this tutorial sake, this should just be uh, showing you the techniques. So this is LGT Keka or Rim. We can, uh, I just call it Rim. That's easy to understand. Hide this window and see. So this is my light scale. I want it to be pretty large. So let's do maybe something like this and it should go somewhere up there. So before we start, I think I need to enable, oh, normalize is on, which is correct. Um, exposure is here, that's all fine. Let's do two samples for this. And okay, so if I wanna place this, I go to look through selected, I move it up, maybe first frame this guy something like this or it's hard to place it feels like it's inverted or something okay so let's bring in exposure let's try increasing that i don't think it's updating properly feels like something is not updating so let's just update full scene there we go so now we have the light in here and now it's all about placing it so um, if I go to look through selected, it feels inverted anyways. Um, I think though we need to have the cookie in here just to get it more or better to set up. Obviously 15 is a lot brighter than I want it to be. This could work. Okay, so now let's uh, unhide the Oreo. There it is. So you can see there is a rim happening on the surface there, which is awesome. And if I go to lighting mode like this and I hide the environment light for now, we just have the rim light. Okay, so that is working. You can see it's working as I want it to. We can increase the exposure a bit more like this. I think this works. So now we have a nice 
uh, rim edge here and it's getting catching highlights everywhere and it might be that it's too big which means it's uh, it will give us very soft shadow so we can just scale it down and because I have normalize on it does not change my intensity it just changes the shadow softness you can see now here we get hard shadows and if I make it larger uh, this shadow here gets really smooth which is a very nice so unhiding the environment light we get this nice light over here and if you feel that the environment is too strong obviously feel free to to reduce that uh, we can try to go into negative uh, 0.5 like half a stop lower and then we get a better key to uh, rim ratio and what I also like to do is um, colorize my lights a bit so we can use color temperature for a blue rim light which is nice which gives us a nice feel and we can play up the the key to be a bit more on the warmer side and to do that because it's an HDR you cannot just use color temperature unfortunately um, you need to create a color correct node in between uh, which is what I do pretty often actually so out color goes into input here and then color out goes right back there so now that's connected in between it breaks unfortunately the UI because the AI color correct does not display it unfortunately but that's not a big issue oh you can actually I think we can actually tint it right in here as well if I'm not mistaken I think this should do it as well let's just try that so if I would just color gain this to be more yellow yeah that's something we can do as well so without using the color correct you can just do color gain in here and make it a bit more yellow warm it up a bit so we can delete this actually so now we have a nice blue rim and a pretty warm key which is cool all right, so I'm saving. So now I think um, the lighting is pretty nice. Maybe we can add some more detail here because this is very flat. Uh, but for now, we just leave it, go back to shading mode and see what we get. So nice key, nice glints over there. And let's bring back the shader. So um, subsurface back to one. And this is now what we currently have. And I feel that my rim is t a bit too specky but uh, overall i definitely like the translucent effect now of the of the of the milk you can see it's working pretty nice you can see the fall of right there which is pretty nice um so we can try to just increase the environment light back to zero which is the original light intensity and maybe just dial down the rim a bit. So I think it's on um, 50, oh, it's on 10, so 10.5, maybe go 9.5 on the, on the rim. So that's not as bright anymore. And if you want, obviously you can just add another light on the key side to get like stronger surface reflections as well. So I, I saved again because of the Oreo, it's a pretty large scene file, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so lights, light, area light, um, scale this one up. And I just pause the render for now so we have faster viewport interaction. Uh, if I actually stop the render, there we go. Uh, okay, so rotating this over cameras here so I want to get more reflections on that side so I will be placing this somewhere here up there facing down and maybe just scale it up and let's see what we get by this so if I do isolate on the light this is what we get exposure back to 10 and this is now the light so now you can see we get the nice studio effect or studio reflection on this which is helpful which we want and if you want to break physicality make a nice render um, this is something you can do you can just disable the um, visibility for scattering so that won't be contributing it's only a spec light now we can disable diffuse as well so that's a fully spec light 
uh, this will just help a bit to add more detail to the whole thing. I think this is a nice addition to the render. Um, so this would be the one thing we can do. And obviously, uh, which looked pretty nice just now is, um, let's just add this LGT key. You can also totally go for a studio lighting environment by just hiding the environment light and going for the key and making this back for scattering. And then you get also a pretty nice image as well. If it's updating, it's not updating, why not? Oh, maybe, no, there we go. So this would be the studio light effect. So it's just two key light, uh, two area lights, which also give a pretty nice effect on the whole milk thingy. Um, but let's just unhide the environment again and see what we get. And I still have the light currently on for spec and scatter. So this might be just too strong. So if I, if you would compare this, if I, if you check this image now, and if I disable the scatter, yeah, it's not adding too much actually. So I think we can just leave it off and we don't, maybe we wanted to affect this. No, I think we're good. So this would be currently my milk shader. And I think uh, obviously what would help is um, adding motion blur. Uh, but what, what will also help is adding depth of field. And I like to render that just because I have still images and I, it just looks a lot better. So changing the mode to basic and then using either you can just um, enable the depth of field in the render cam. You go to Arnold tab and go to enable depth of field. Um, I have a little helper as well. So it's in light shader helper. Uh, camera a, f a focus rig so I would just select my render cam and then the object which is the Oreo in this case and I just hit the focus rig and now you can r can see what's happening it automatically creates a locator on my object and then does the depth of field manually so focus point is here and obviously you can just move this guy wherever you want and you can see that the focus point is updated so if I would snap this to the surface on, on the front there, snapping is a bit slow. You can see that this area is right in focus. And now I can easily just move it to the cookie or even higher and it just updates the focal point. Um, obviously I wanna focus the cookie, which is my main object in this case. Uh, there we go. So it's focusing somewhere there. Let's just move it out a bit. And obviously the range is very shallow. So you can go to your camera again and change the depth, the aperture. So it's a real world scale. So this would be one centimeter aperture, which is very wide open. I'm not sure what it translates to in, I think it's in and I don't know what, what the real aperture would be. So point one is uh, one millimeter. Uh, you can see it's nice steps of feel at the bottom and top. So we can maybe go to point two to get a bit dramatic effect. So nice bouquet at the top, cookies there. And let's save and enable motion blur as well. And then I'll do the final render. So motion blur is on. Oh, before we go into final render, obviously um, we need to go uh, over render settings. So if I enable motion blur, it should do the keys. So is that, did that happen now? Yeah, so you can see there is some motion going on and I feel it's, it can be, it could be more. I think there's a multiplier velocity scale might be it. Yeah, so velocity scale increases the motion vectors by two in this case. So you can see more motion going on. Anyway, so um, bringing back depth of feel in the camera. Uh, where is it? Arnold tab, depth of field on. So that's the depth of field. 
now because it's motion blurred and in depth of field it might be a bit too much on my depth of field so let's go back to maybe 1.5 yeah this needs to need to do the trick and you can see now the with the basic um debug mode you can see it's already oh and we also are oops we are also on 50 percent if i recall it correct so if you go to 100 percent and render region just this part you can see it's very noisy already so um the first thing with motion blur and depth of field if you render both um Put all the values to, to 1 and make sure you get rid of this noise by increasing a sample. So if you go to 8, you can see it gets cleaner, which is nice. You can go to 10 and it should be good enough. So this is good. Let's check the really small ones here. And they are good as well. In the worst case, you can hit a denoiser and clean it up a lot more. Okay, so now we go to uh, this area here and enable shading mode and now we would need to see um, the scatter you can see the SSS is still very noisy so if I would disable um, uh, where is it uh, depth of field and motion blur so both of these are off this is what I currently get and it's very noisy even on 10 10 and 1 right so now let's try 2 and see what the noise is for this because it's a fully scattered shader the only thing which will make this cleaner is adjusting the SSS values and you can see from uh, 1 to 2 it's a dramatic jump and it, it might already be good enough for most of most of you um, but for the final render I like to go a bit overboard let's try 3 so it's 10 times 10 is 100 times 3 times 3 is 9 so it's 900 samples for scattering um, which is a lot but we get a very clean render okay so I will render this now and I'll be back once it's done alrighty so after 10 minutes I have a final render I also enabled output AOVs so we have scatter separate diffuse raw um, all these fancy things as well and to see it in full scale let's bring this guy up close so I'm very happy with the result actually because it looks a lot more like milk like the one on the right which was my demo image uh, felt still too too see-through and I think the one on the left which is the one on the tutorial feels very thick and whole similar like the one here actually and it, not exactly like the one on this one I, f I f actually find that this one looks more like paint like it's very thick and solid but this one is definitely very scattery and I think this one is very close to that so this sums up the tutorial and I really hope you enjoyed it. I showed you all my techniques to um, to set up a scene, to do shaders on, on the Oreo and also setting up the scene, the lights, placing some beauty lights. And again, all this is available for, for you on my Patreon page if you subscribe to the source materials uh, rewards here and you get access to the full scene and you can actually see what I did, check the shaders again for your reference and all that stuff. So thanks again for tuning in and as always, happy rendering.